Before we get in and start to uh, sculpt or uh, manufacture this skull, what we want to do is analyze the proportions and make sure that we have a clear sense of what the units of measurement are here. And by that I mean are what is an eighth of a head tall, what's an eighth of a head wide. We just need to start to break this up into very easy to digest units. So this is a great time for you to break out the notepad, start writing down these notes. Don't try sculpting while we do this because this is going to get very incrementally uh, specific. The first unit of measurement that you're absolutely aware of by now is the halfway point for the eye. So first thing I'm going to do is just divide this right down the middle and then halfway point for the eye. Now this halfway point is not going to line up perfectly. So if you were to right now take a pin to your screen while I do it and try to say find the halfway point in relationship to the top and the bottom, it's not going to be perfect. The halfway point is best taken from a side view in terms of being very specific about it. Uh, we have here a image that's taken with a really long focal length. There's not a lot of perspective distortion here. But think about how far forward your chin is versus this point here in the top of your head, which is actually really the back of your head. That's right when it turns to the back of your head quite a ways back. You can actually see it here in this little tiny piece. There's a, a big difference between those and it's enough to throw off perspective. So don't sweat the fact that these are not lining up. It's uh, kind of unimportant from this view. What we do want to sweat is what's the proportional difference for the orbit of the eye versus where the teeth are, the nose, and the cheeks. That's what we want to find. And that's what we're going to have a fairly easy time finding if we just proceed slowly and uh, as methodically as we possibly can. So I'm going to draw out another line here for one side and another line for the other. So we just completely encapsulate this in a box. And I'm being specific, very specific. You want to because the difference between an eighth of a an head and a sixteenth of a head when you're sketching can get quite blurred. So you can really lose perspective on what's what at that point. So break out a ruler, put that ruler on your screen, check your measurements. Okay, now let's figure out first and foremost where the halfway point is in the width. Make sure that we have a clear unit of measurement for that. So here's our halfway point, slightly towards the outside of the eye. Then let's divide that halfway point in half so we can start to get eighth of a head units. Okay, so we've got eighth of a head. And notice what we have here. It appears that the orbit of the eye, or the zygomatic bone, heading up to the cephanoidal process, all of this is one eighth. So that's good to know because that means that our overhang right here is going to be one eighth of a head of a width inside from the high point of the skull. Good to know. That's our first really important measurement to have established. Now the next thing I need to do is figure out where the eyes are going to, or where the orbit of the, that eye is really going to start. So I'm taking this, this eighth of a head unit and I'm dividing that further in half. Okay, and while this is not accurate, the unit of measurement I'm going to give you right now, it is one of those measurements that's accurate enough. It's going to give us a building point. So the space in between the orbit of the eye, we're going to say is one eighth of its width. 
you can kind of see that it actually is built out a little bit from that which is fine because that's a quick move brush adjustment so we have the uh, the width between the eye and the width from the border of the eye uh, orbit of the eye out to the high point here let's try to see if we can figure out an easy unit of measurement to get the height of this and I'm just going to guess right off the bat and say one-eighth of a head is going to work for us so you can see that's one-eighth of a head let's just draw that line straight across so pretty cool now we know the orbit of the eye is one-eighth of a head apart and it's also well at least at this point from the halfway about one-eighth of a head in extra height let's see if we can figure out what the bottom is and I'm going to again guess that we can use this one-eighth because there's a lot of points in the body where you just find this natural symmetry okay so we've now made it one-eighth from the midway uh, top and bottom so that's really good for us to have established but we have to also keep in mind that this is just we're forcing this upon our figure you can see plenty of the form that is inside uh, and, and around that so now we need to make a, a couple of adjustments to this eye we need to make sure that we're aware that it's going to get chopped off in places so for example the glabella is going to cut it at a diagonal up towards the top then it's going to have a bit of a plateau the overhang cuts it downwards plateau bottom corner of the eye the cheekbone that cuts it at a diagonal plateaus and then frontal process of the maxilla and then the plateau so we've got at this point one two three four five six seven eight you've got eight sides and a lot of times when you look at these eyes uh, in reference they really just pull together a kind of an upward rectangle and what we're talking about is we just lop off one side lop off another another and another and that ends up creating the orbit of the eye that we're talking about so it starts as that nice kind of simple rectangle and then evolves to a much more complex shape where we can fit the eye in and, and all of that now let's take a look at the rest of our measurements because the next thing we want to try to find is where the bottom of the nose is and again we're gonna to try to fit everything within easy measurements so we want to try this one-eighth of a head right away and there you go look at how awesome that is quite awesome also notice how the cheek is lining up with the bottom of that nose this may be a little perspective distortion maybe there's just a little bit of natural adjustment like it's not perfect perfectly one-eighth of that width but either way that's a really nice useful measurement so again this is going to be one-eighth of a head and then notice where the top part of this nose is it's right there where our midline is or where we drew the midline so now we know that the top part of the nasal bone the nasal opening is going to be at the midline we know the bottom part is going to be essentially what's uh, one-fourth of the width of the head straight down and we're going to conform roughly to the nostril opening being one-eighth so you can see this is pretty mechanical we're drawing directly on photo reference we're using you know an actual specimen that's cast from a real skull 
And everything fits within these eighth of a head units. Eighth of a head, quarter of a head, half a head. Some of the measurements are eighth of the height uh, or an eighth of the width. The next measurement that we need to look at is where the teeth are. And this is pretty cool. You've probably already seen it, but that is one half of the distance from the nostril opening to the chin. That's one half. Pretty astounding. It has nothing to do with half the width, and this is where proportions get confusing. It has to do with the fact that it is just half of this distance. Now, keep in mind that this is not the the place where your lips part. The place where your lips part is a little bit higher, and that's really important uh, to keep in your mind because at this point, we can come in and start to suggest it. Now, where's the corner of the mouth? Some people will say the corner of the mouth is in the middle of the eye. So you can see I'm just taking that straight down from the middle of the eye, roughly the middle. And that's possible, but that's kind of a wide mouth. And if you've seen Julia Roberts, or um, let's say uh, the width of the mouth of, of Julia Roberts versus, say, Al Pacino versus uh, Christopher Walken, it, there's a lot of variety here for how wide the mouth gets. So there's no rule, but one thing that you can really see that influences the shape of this is is where the teeth change their plane and go backwards in space. You really want to be mindful of that and there's one really important indicator for where they change. Look for this tooth right here. That's called the canine. The canine tooth is the turning point for your uh, mouth. It turns off to the side at that point. And this could be wider or uh, smaller. Uh, it all depends on the person. So the, the whole muzzle of these teeth, that can widen. Take a look at Julia Roberts' teeth and see if you can position uh, where her canine is and how that relates to the, uh, to the width of her mouth. In our case, I'm going to place the corner of the mouth slightly outside of that. I'm going to place it right at that halfway point. But the line of the lip comes up. The bottom lip is going to cover this bottom portion. That's kind of a large uh, lower lip. But upper lip is here. So that measurement isn't really a definitive measurement in terms of, say, where the halfway point is. The, the point where the teeth are doesn't tell us where the line of the lip is exactly. We have to then extrapolate up from that and create the curve. But it's a very essential measurement because it does tell us where the corner of the lip is, and that's a very useful note. So at this point, we've had eighth of a head, and we've had half a head units. And everything is kind of fit within that range really, really well. So this is going to be really important when we come in and we start to sculpt the base mesh because we're going to want to keep all of these units of measurement in our mind.